scenic turn. Look at the camera. Walking in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> morning or whatever it is wherever you guys are my lovely internet friends I am sitting on the floor of our Airbnb finishing laundry before we head to our next location tomorrow morning here in Ireland but I wanted to share with you guys today what happened uh, we went to Glen V or Glen Vey Ireland friends correct me National Park and Castle and first off it was breathtaking and amazing and I was reminded yet again how truly healing nature is but secondly I was able to actually hike sort of for the first time not just since amputation really since I don't know maybe a year and a half uh, there may be a couple okay days in there before I had my surgery where I was able to go walking um, but mostly I was just in so much pain that I wasn't able to and today was a good day like my bursa issue wasn't really hurting that much and so I was able to take my eye walk and uh, I was able to do this we're gonna watch Joe Go up all 67 steps of her eye walk. That's right, it's gonna be like a 20 feet. And they were never heard of again. <laughs> Should like fuzz it out like zzz, static. I am queen. There's more to go. No. We're coming to the top. Give everybody a reference point. She came up all the way here by herself. It's like an actual hike. Well, there is a lock gate at the top. I messed this one up real good. Mm. But look at this. It's so pretty. Just hiked up to the top of this in Ireland. We haven't been hiking in how long? At least a year. Yeah, More. seriously. It's amazing. It we used to go hiking with the puppies like every weekend whenever we could and it's been forever since we could. It's only the beginning. Soon we'll be able to do that a lot more once I have a leg and everything. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so that was uh, truly, truly, truly amazing. Secondly, holy cow guys. After we got done at the park, we went and got a super awesome dinner, like a steak mashed potatoes. I ate all of it because it was delicious, right? Usually that would keep me full for hours upon hours. By the time we got back to the Airbnb where we were staying, I was starving again. I realized what they say about using a lot more energy, like being an amputee and moving around and stuff like that is so true. I just am still hungry right now. Anyways, that's beside the point. While we were driving back from the park to this location, I was looking out the window and it was just filled with like so much peace. The countryside is gorgeous and different and a lot of people talk about Ireland being magical and I understand why. There's something really special here and I'm really blessed to be here and I was thinking about how amazing it would be to live here someday because Brian and I had talked about it before, before even coming here and I was just like, yeah, I could totally do this and we're in a pretty rural area and then it just kind of hit me that like, oh wait, we couldn't do that for a while, first of all because um, I don't have a prosthetic leg that's gonna be reliable for a while and I would have to find a prosthetics office here and I would have to check in with them because I'd constantly be making readjustments and like so on and so forth and wait, um, you know, after that it's gonna come like hopefully, fingers crossed, a, a running blade and as I was just like looking out the window at this incredible, incredible landscape, I think I realized that to some extent to probably a large extent, I am in denial about the fact that all of this is very permanent. Each day I get more and more used to it. Each day I get, I find more of a new normal. But I think even the fact that I had, like intentionally, unintentionally, didn't plan for some aspects of this trip, like bathroom modifications for like easily taking a shower, point towards the fact that I am, um, I think part of me thinks that this is like, temporary and it'll all go back to like normal someday soon eventually which is a weird thing to say considering we're five months in and obviously my leg is gone and it's not coming back but as I was looking out that window when we were driving today I realized that 
I don't think my brain has come to terms with that. It's a weird thing to come to terms with. That like if I wanted to live out here, it would probably mean extensive driving for prosthetics appointments and stuff like that whenever I needed that for the rest of my life. And I mean, I don't know that for sure, but I do know that once everything gets settled in like a year or two, you still have to go back in for you know adjustments and um, new parts and pieces and, and stuff like that. And so it was a very frozen moment for a second there for me to think that like, oh, this is actually forever, forever, forever. And I will get used to it. Also, it's kind of like a deer in the headlights moment where I don't want to make peace with it because I don't want that to be the reality. I don't want it to be, I don't want to have to be constantly making adjustments and thinking about it. I want it to be something where it's just clean and done. And that is not the life that I have and that's okay. But I think that there's a lot of grieving left to do. People talk about denial being one of the stages of grief. I don't believe in stages. I think grief is just like a plate of spaghetti that you just like jump back and forth and follow in weird directions in your head and you go through many emotions over and over again. But I think denial is definitely to some extent where I am sitting. And that just hit me like a train today and it's weird. And so I think, um, I think living in denial has certain dangers because I don't want to take care of things the way that I should. Like I don't want to modify things the way that I should. I don't want to accommodate myself as much as I should because I don't want to make peace with the reality that things are as different as they are, if that makes any sense. It's been so good to be away. So good to be away from everything. Just to take a moment away from things, to have the majority of things just be carefree for a little bit. And I'm grateful for that because I know things are gonna snap back to reality in a little while but not for a few more days. And so for these last few days, I am going to love the time that we have here and not think about what I'm headed back to. And that's just what I'm gonna do. I am so grateful for the time I have here. I love you guys. I'm thinking about you. Thank you for listening to me as always. I will upload another video whenever I, you know, get internet reception in Ireland. It seems that, it, it, it seems that Colorado has great internet compared to certain places that I, all the places I've been so far in Ireland. So we'll see when I can upload it next. So I love you guys. I'm thinking of you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. So how many uh, uh, pop-up petting zoos have you tried to establish? Three separate petting zoos, <laughs> nine animals. I am 0 for 9. <laughs> so none of the animals like me here. I don't quite understand why. I'm handsome. I have a red beard. I look like I'm part of the Irish culture. He does. But something about them, they know that I am a filthy American. <laughs> If you don't know, a pop-up petting zoo is when you just try to pet random woodland creatures that uh, shouldn't be, shouldn't be petted. Hand her from the sky.